On today's episode, we're going to talk about how alcohol is making you fat and old. Sorry, guys, but we're gonna we're gonna get into it. <laughs> Grab your coffee, not your beer. Let's get into it. I like that. Grab your coffee, not your beer. Yep. Real talk. Real Funny, talk. I just got off an episode before this one about alcohol, how bad it is for you. Yeah, it's, I know that's a coincidence, too, because you had no idea. No, what, zero idea. We're talking about this now. Yeah. Round two, I guess. Yeah, because uh, we're going to get into it. Just certain things that I never really knew. Some Sometimes I like to think like, I like to stop and think we know something for so long, but we never stop to think like, but why is that? But what happens? Why does it do that? You know? Yeah. Sometimes, no one, sometimes you don't question it. Right. So, Got to question everything. Yes. And so, yeah, I want to get into that. Uh, happy Monday to all of the listeners and the viewers. Just a reminder, follow us over on our candidly underscore with coffee on Instagram. Leave us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I check to see if there's no one, <laughs> no she one coming in. And I read all of them. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. We're officially in the uh, last week of open registration for BBC. So if there are still spots available, if this is the time you want to get in because it starts next Monday, September 16th. And uh, then it's not going to start again until mid-November. So you want to get in. This is a good one to get into, to get into a right mindset before the holidays. It is. It's perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect time. I keep saying that. I know people think I'm crazy. I'm like, the new year already started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we're going to enter the fall soon. Mm-hmm. It will start getting let off the gas. Then before you know it, Halloween is here. Yeah. Then November is here. Then you really let off the Then December is here. Everybody thinks they get a free pass for the month. No free passes, you yeah, guys. I know. Sorry. Plus, a lot of, you know, a lot of moms specifically, they're busy. We're really busy in the month of August, coming off of vacations, getting kids ready for school to go back to school and all of that. Yeah. So now things should start be starting to settle into a new routine for the school year. So it's a good time for, for moms to settle into their new routine as well and not put themselves on the back burner. Exactly. Because that doesn't help anybody. Man, I had a little bit of a, a situation on my way here before I came here. So I was at home. You took the streets, I right? To, no, I was fine. That has nothing to do with the drive. I didn't take the streets. I took the freeway and I got here in eight minutes. So... Your advice was wrong. There, I did a ways. It was fine. You Anyways, got off Bird Avenue. No, I got off on eighty seven. It was open. Wow. So I'm at the desk trying to like get some stuff done. I'm I'm finally like ahead of time on getting things done, and then I there's a bunch of ruckus at the door. I finally go check the door, and there's huge boxes on the porch, three ginormous boxes. No delivery man there. I'm like, what the heck is this? So I look in the Amazon account first and Alyssa ordered patio furniture but she del- had it delivered to our house she didn't switch the by address accident. yo it's huge boxes of it's a cute patio set um so you know i was like fuck cuz it's it's like not even going to fit into my car to to get it to you know the process is like return it then get a refund and then she has to order it again after she gets the refund and she won't get the set until freaking like October at that point. So, of course, I'm like flustered and I call her. I'm like, Alyssa, like what happened? She goes, I thought I did. Oh, man. You know, she's upset. Right. And so I have someone that like handles like all of the uh, sellers and stuff on Amazon or I have a few people. So I reached out to like my my contact who does the collaborations with. Amazon and I was yeah. like, listen, it's gonna cost the company and just be more of a hassle to return this. It's a freight shipping. I mean, and then to reorder and all of that, like I'm willing to keep it if the the brand wants to do a collaboration. Like I'll keep it, then I'll order, I'll get a new set for free that will go to Alyssa in San Diego. So I'm waiting to hear back. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. What a, what a, you swung it. <laughs> yeah, because I've actually been, I've been uh, contacted by similar brands to do collaborations like that. So I'm like, why, why not? I mean, it's a, a I'm a offering more than the value of that. And they're actually getting the benefit of not having to deal with a refund and all of that. 
And so basically all I would need to do is just order her a set to have delivered to her, but then I have to keep this set or open it and, you know, put it together and decide where I'm gonna put it. I'm either put it in the front porch. It'd be cute probably. It's a cute set, but or or yeah. Get rid and of the other set. That other set that's kind of messed up that's in the backyard will put that up front. Maybe someone will take it and then put the chair the two seater that we have now in the back. Gotcha. Or like reading or something for Tyler back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that is the solution. I think that that'll work. Um, and then I'll just, you know, be able to place her set, order that or whatever. But then I felt bad because I called her to give her an update. I said, well, let me l figure it out and then I'll call you back. And she was crying, so I felt bad. Damn. She uh, dropped the ball on that one, huh? I know, so I felt bad, but that actually worries me because I'm like, if that c triggered her to cry, then she's she's already like what I told you about. Like I'm already, yeah. she might already be a little bit feeling bluesy. Yeah. Because that, I'm like Alyssa, it's nothing to cry about. It's a fixable problem. Yeah, exactly. It's not if that serious. If problems are fixable, there's no reason to cry. Yeah. It's it's when things are unfixable, then that becomes like you have to do a little bit of mourning for whatever situation. Yeah, it's true. But if it's a fixable problem, it's no it's no reason to cry. Even It's even fixable if I didn't figure out the collaboration because the other option is we just take a couple of trips to get it to the UPS store. They'll process a refund. She'll have to wait till the company gets it back, which is probably two weeks to get a refund and then yeah. she'd have to reorder it at that point. Yeah. That's just option number two. But I think option number one is going to work. I'll know soon here, so... It's going to be all right. Just tell a girl it's going to be all right. I know. As I told her, it's fixable. I hope I like the set. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a picture of it at least? Did she give you a picture yeah, of what it looks cute. like? Yeah, it's cute. I actually found her the set that would fit perfectly to make a little nook in her in her patio. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's okay. It's cute. It's going to be all right. Yeah. But now, you know, we, we're going to have all those boxes and we're going to have to put it together somewhat. It has to be put together a little bit. Yeah. Just another thing when I have a very meticulous schedule right now. I know. But now I feel bad because she feels bad. Damn. Domino effect. I know. There you go. And there you have it. So moving on to um, other news. Oh, before I go too far, you guys, Off Topic is officially on our YouTube membership site. So make sure if you are interested in joining our membership site, Go to the link in the description, join. I have to say, the people, we, our first off topic episode obviously went up last week. Another one's going up Wednesday. Um, the, the members commented and said it's better than ever. Oh, they're enjoying it? Yeah. Good. That they're enjoying it. I'm glad. I'm happy. Yeah. So um, I love it. I love it. That's really fun. It's just a different, very different vibe. For whatever reason, it is a very different vibe from this show, I think. Yeah, it is. You know, we have to speak a little bit more freely. Yeah. So uh, make sure you guys join that. That group is growing. Join our inner circle for all of that exclusive content. And um, yeah, uh, let's go into a hot topic. I, I smell a binge coming on, but not a food binge. What kind of binge? It's going to be a TV binge. Oh, boy. A new series is dropping. Actually, by the time... This episode comes out. I will have already binged this series. So stay tuned to the next episode. We'll talk about it a little bit. But there is a new series on Hulu that dropped on Friday, September 6th. And it is called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Yeah. And what is The Secret Lives so of Mormon Wives? So basically, there was this group of Mormon wives that became very popular on TikTok. It was called Mom Talk. Very popular. They all have m millions of followers on TikTok. They, you know, dance or whatever, and they're and they're Mormon, and so they play on that or whatever. Well, one of the members, the reason why they really blew up and went viral is because one of the members of that group came out and said that her and a bunch of other couples in the community were soft swingers. Did you hear about that at all, the never, Mormon swingers? Never in my life. It was Because it was I'm mainstream. Just, I'm just learning this, no. Yeah, so they- I think, have I ever heard this? No, the only thing I heard was, it, didn't the, weren't the men allowed to have multiple wives or on my trip? No, babe, this is not, did you hear this situation or not? This particular headline? No. Okay. So this particular headline was this particular group of people 
some of them were soft swingers and she exposed it. So Whoa. when she exposed it, for whatever reason, it was like wildfire. And so she was part of that group, that mom talk group. Some of the other girls in that group, they weren't involved in the swinger situation, but there was a lot of drama that came out of it, a lot of secrets exposed. And uh, as a result, they got approached to do a reality show. And so they film, they have a, they now have a reality show. I think there's like 10, 12 episodes or something like that. And it kind of is going to document like that whole blow up and like how it, you know, how the community responded to it, what's happening. And it's going to document their lives. And it's also interesting because I feel like there is so much intrigue when it comes to the Mormon community. There's so much intrigue when when it comes to their because of the some of their um, traditions and and the way they live and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting. And I'm I'm definitely intrigued and can't wait to watch. But yeah, apparently the whole soft swinging thing, it's young couples wait, wait, too. Hold on, let me stop you there. Hold up. What is soft swinging for? Okay, I'm off? gonna explain. Okay. Soft swinging is they commingle with each other's spouses, but no intercourse. Commingle. Yeah, like you know, like everything but intercourse. Oh. And in in but it's swinging. But every but they had like their own rules and parameters. But it was no intercourse, or wasn't supposed to be intercourse. But you know supposed how to be. you know how that goes. Then there's always affairs that come out, and there's a lot of drama. Of course, a lot of drama. They're going to go into all of the details and stuff of it, like on the show. So I want to definitely want to see that play out. But I think it's just crazy because what happens is it's young people too. So it's like you know couples in their twenties. I feel like. And I'm just you said couples in their twenties. Couples in oh, their twenties. There's gonna be a lot of drama. Well, what I feel like though, in terms of the Mormon community, and this is just my opinion, because it also applies to the strict Catholic communities too. Just any real strict religious communities that feel like they had to be bound to very specific rules, especially when it comes to sexuality and things like that. Those are the ones that go the most wild. Why is that? Because that always happens. Because you, when you just we as humans, when we can't have something, or told we're not supposed to have something, food, anything, right? We want it. A pair of shoes, can't get it. We want them, right? So if you're telling, you know, horny teenagers they can't have sex, well, then they're gonna want it more than ever. So they yeah. they come up with all these creative ways to get around the rules. And that's what creates so much intrigue about the Mormon community in particular. But let me tell you this. I can speak firsthand that um, I worked for a company. In, it, they were based out of San Francisco, but they were bought out by a Mormon company that was based out of Utah. All of those, uh, you know, very buttoned up Mormon, you know, God-fearing men. List, straight lace to calm. They would come into town with their assistants, and s apparently when you step foot in SFO in San Francisco, the Book of Mormon goes out the window because Gone, those huh? guys were a hot mess. They were terrible. They were very uh, salacious, let's just put it that way, and they always traveled with their assistants. It was always so obvious, but they were the most flirty, inappropriate. Remember that one time I told, shared that comment someone made when I com came back from maternity leave with Alyssa? Yeah. And he kind of like made me feel very uncomfortable, kind of backed me up into a, by the coffee machine. He's like, wow, you just had a baby? Like he was an executive and he was from Utah. He was a Mormon executive from Utah. Yeah. Man, doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Anyways, I'm not saying that all Mormon people are bad. So don't come for me. Don't cancel me. I'm just saying yeah. there's a lot of intrigue in it. Also, and I'm Catholic, okay? I come from the, the Catholic community. And I know that the Catholic school girls, you know, when their parents dropped, drove off, they all went into the bathroom and hiked up their skirts. I remember that. Okay? In that area. We yeah. all did that. And so. I, I always chased Catholic school girls in high school. I didn't like public school girls. I always had girlfriends at Catholic schools. Yeah. They liked so. the bad boys, the thug-ass dudes. Yeah, but for sure, you know what I want to get into because I learned some interesting things, but it's more of definitely topics for off topic. So if you're inner circle, tune into our episode Wednesday of off topic because I want to get into this and it's going to be after I have already binged some of the episodes. So I'll have even more insight, but I've watched some of them on podcasts and I have some some thoughts. So we'll, we'll get into it on off topic. 
All right, let's take a little break for Mega Fit Meals and we'll be right back. Life is busy, and when I get busy and don't have time to meal prep, I reach into my freezer and grab a MegaFit Meals. MegaFit Meals are a macro-friendly meal prep, no subscription required, real quality ingredients. They switch up the menu. You guys, I love them. Their chicken tenders, the margarita pizza, the chicken quesadillas. I mean, this food sounds indulgent, but guess what? It fits right into your macros. Head over to their website, and don't you forget to use code J-E-A-N-I-N-E. That's code Janine for a discount. All right. Speaking of Mega Fit, they are coming. Yes, I did place the order just in time. You guys need to start reminding me because sometimes I, I, I almost forget. Monday? We have to remind you on Mondays, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, because those come in handy. I'm going to have some today. Yep. All right. So let's get into some comments. Forever in Bloom said... Y'all are so entertaining. I could watch you all day. I get a good laugh every time I watch. That was on the last vlog because I kind of just set the camera up and just let it record while we were in the kitchen just bantering. So there was kind of a lot of footage from that. I thought it was pretty funny. I probably didn't even know you were recording. You did because you talked yeah. to the camera. Oh, did I? There was some There was some things I, I heard later that you talked to the camera with your jalapenos and all of that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about <laughs> I did that. <laughs> All right, the next one is Margarita C. Pena. Thank you for this video. Great tips. I've been feeling exactly like this. I refuse to go backward, refuse. Scale recently started going back up, and I was like, hell no, LOL. She's referring to my What I Eat in a Day video. Um, in those videos, I give a lot of tips for like how to prevent re weight regain, how to lose weight, how to keep it off. And uh, yeah, my biggest tip is you have to stay on top of it. You can't just like stop weighing yourself once you're done with your weight loss journey. You're never done. Yeah. It's it's crazy, and mm -hmm. I hate, and I, I'm telling you, this sucks. I know you don't want to hear this, but you're never done. Mm -mm. You think you are. You could be in maintenance for a little bit, but you're never done. Mm -mm. It's just, you ain't done. It's just, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just like saying like, oh, once I get to a certain, you know, amount in my savings account, I'm going to stop logging into the bank account and looking at it. Right. But I'm going to spend money still, you know, and sometimes I'll save, but I'll still spend. But I'm sure it'll stay around the same. What do you think is going to happen to that bank account? It's going to dwindle. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, yeah. Real quick. Real quick. So, yeah, you're never done. I think you're so right with that. Nope. All right. So um, let's take a little break for One Up Nutrition and we will be right back. It is no secret to you guys by now how much I love my 1UP Nutrition supplements. They are a part of my daily routine from the Daily Cleanse and the Gut Health Plus that help keep my digestion on point to their protein powders that I incorporate into so many different recipes. The ISO protein is very easy to digest and only 110 calories per scoop. The whey protein is delicious. The flavors are so good and always have little extra crunchy cookie pieces in them that just take the flavor to the next level. Their powders like the Pure Rebuild and the Pre-Workout are a staple in my daily workout routine. Their flavors are amazing. I'm alcohol-free these days, but I swear when I drink some of these flavors from 1UP, I actually feel like I'm having a delicious mocktail. Their products are third-party tested, so you know what you're getting. They're made in the USA. If you use code Janine at checkout for a discount, that's J-E-A-N-I-N-E. -E. All right. 1UP Nutrition, by the way, I did I, I don't know if I talked about this already, but I ordered a new supplement from them. And it hasn't come in yet, but it's their fiber powder. They have a fiber powder. Oh, really? That's unflavored. That is like very little calories, if any, like actual calories. And it's, I was thinking like, what a good way to just like boost fiber, dump it into some oatmeal, put it into my, my, my BCAAs or whatever. Right? I like that. Yeah. I like, I'd rather do that better instead of trying to chase it through food. Because sometimes you, I forget to use chia seed or flaxseed in my oatmeal. No, I mean, I do. I just ch I chase it through food. And I let me tell you, the experience that I have had in this little cut that I've been doing has been so much better because I finally implemented every single tip 
that I give to my clients when they're struggling with hunger. And I've been getting like 35 grams of fiber or more. I've been taking my appetite suppressant. I still do my tesofensine. I've been getting my water in. I've just been doing everything. And it made it so much more manageable. You're on it, huh? Yeah, like it's not hard. Like it hasn't been hard. I think sometimes we just forget. Sometimes we, we forget it feels hard. We know what we need to do, but for some reason we don't do it. No, I know. It's just annoying. I annoy myself too. People get overwhelmed, overthinking yeah. it. A lot of times it's just overthinking mm-hmm. it and you don't set yourself reminders. You don't, if you don't create autopilot, do it on a daily basis all the time, you're going to forget how to do it or to do it. I'm sorry. You're going to forget to do it. You have to create habits. I mean, I know we talk about that all the time, but I mean, look it's at the me. only way. I didn't used to take vitamins, remember? Mm -hmm. Now I'm like on point. Mm -hmm. I never used to take vitamins. Now I'm on my creatine, my vitamins, now peptides, you know, now I'm like autopilot. Um, So did you get to the point where, have you gotten to the point with your supplements where if you don't take them or you're off or you don't refill them, it feels weird? Yeah. Yeah, I make sure I fill them up. I start getting low. I hate sometimes filling them up, but I know I got to do it. Yeah. I hate filling them up. I wait till the last day. I do wait till the last day. Yeah. I do them on it, Sundays. It kind of forces you to do it. But it, I got to put them in my body. You know, I just feel like that's just uh, just more more fuel for the fucking engine. You know what, fi- what finally helped me to get consistent with my supplements, like never forget, is because I take my hormones. And so I Im- implement it as part of my regimen when I take like my estrogen. Yeah. I sure as hell am not going to not take my estrogen because I know how... Um, no, you know, imperative that is super but, important. So now it's like it may actually see. This is a very good example. Do you see what I just explained? What I explained was a habit stacking. Yeah. So estrogen is something I know I'm gonna take. That is like a non-negotiable. So I just threw all the other stuff in with my estrogen as a, it's a habit stack. So now because it's attached to something that is a hundred percent a non-negotiable, it happens. All the time. I mean, I took my consistency with supplements from like 65% to 100% of the time by doing that. So that's actually a very good lesson. If you're really trying to get something to stick, and I know we've talked about this before, but it really does work. Attach that thing that you're trying to get to stick to something that is already ironclad, a non-negotiable that you do all the time, and you attach it to that it's going to increase the chances of you doing that. And then this thing will become a habit. That's it. It's like autopilot. I remember every day to take my vitamins, you know, Mm -hmm. even my medicines. I have to, on top of all that stuff, right? I got to remember to take my blood pressure meds. So when you take your blood pressure, when do you take your blood pressure meds? First in the morning. And what triggers you? Do you always do something and then take them? Is there something that triggers you to take your blood pressure meds? Uh, Do you like take them right after mouthwash or is there some sort That's a good of trigger question. no i I probably have to like i drink coffee coffee first uh-huh. after a while I go back and i'm shaving or getting ready ready to hop in yeah. the shower remember to take them so there's nothing that it's not like the same time same thing every time yeah, it's usually in the morning time yeah before uh sometimes i'll do it on empty stomach it doesn't bother me yeah yeah because i was just trying and to say I, cause I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't take them exactly with vitamins i wait take my vitamins later after i've eaten I give it some Two, three hours in between. Well, there's certain things you should take those prescriptions, I think, separate of certain vitamins that you take, like the B vitamins or something like that. There's some things that you have to take it separate. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if you've attached them without even knowing. Sometimes we attach something to an existing habit without even knowing it, but we do it. I So many of the things that I do on a daily basis are rituals and habits. I am just, that is the, I'm a routine ritual habit girl through yes. and through. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's building that habit in your brain. People mm-hmm. don't realize you, it becomes autopilot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know we keep saying it sounds like a broken record, but it's true. You got to keep doing it over and over and over and mm-hmm. over. And then you, before you know, you're just doing it. Yeah. You're on autopilot. Boom, boom, boom. I do it this time every day. It's if you do it at the same time every day, you just you just remember to do it. Yeah. It's kind of like with my editing, with my video editing, I've now done it. So like when I edit my vlogs, my what I eat in a day, it's treadmill time. So now it's kind of like synonymous with, okay, if I have a video to edit, it's treadmill time. And so that's always going to be like two hours of treadmill time. And I, I pretty much almost always have something to edit. So I get in, you know, all that treadmill time. And I also, another thing that I've done, 
compared to the past is I don't drink caffeine to up a, up until about an hour till I've been awake. Mm-hmm. A lot of people run straight to the coffee maker mm-hmm. as soon as they wake up. Mm-hmm. No, I do high, I do my little ritual. Drink a glass of water first, then electrolytes and creatine mm-hmm. my second glass. And if we have BCAAs or sour magnesium, mm-hmm. I throw that in there. That's my ritual before I drink coffee. No, I, have I let a, my body naturally wake up first. Yeah, me too, because I have a solid morning ritual. I let the dogs out. If they haven't been out yet, I let the dogs out. I go into my room. I drink water first, and I take my uh, thyroid pill, my thyroid medication. And you can't have anything. It's got to be an empty stomach, water only. So I do that. That's like the first 45 minutes of my day. And yeah. then I take my tezofencine and the 5-amino 1-MQ from um, Transcend. Yeah. And then I still wait another like 20, 30 minutes. And then I have my energy drink or coffee or whatever, my caffeine. So I'm up for over an hour before I have my caffeine too. And I've gotten totally used to it. I'm fine. Me too. At first mm-hmm. it was kind of hard. You just got to push through and then. Uh, That's it. You, be, you, you get eventually get used to it. Get used to it. Mm-hmm. You do. Yeah, you do. At first it might feel weird because you're so used to autopilot. Go right to the coffee maker or right to your you're like, energy drink. Yeah, no, don't do yeah. that. Just I don't like up. to do that. I like to wait until I'm fully awake so that yeah. I can enjoy it and i've already had a good amount of water you know i'm just drinking water and working on some things dogs are eating i have a nice little routine and uh, i love the routine because it's at this point i've been doing it long enough it's autopilot and yeah. that is the best feeling when your routine is autopilot yeah you know it's not like that in the beginning no even if you attempted to do that to break that don't just stay on your autopilot no nope. and then i do my workout at, i leave for my workout at 7 a.m you know, it's just like, and then I come home from my workout and it's video editing time on the treadmill. And it's just like, I have a, a good routine, a good rhythm, and it makes life so much easier. And so if you do not have that solidified yet, you guys work on it because it'll make your life easier. It doesn't have to be any kind of, doesn't have to be my routine. It has to be what works for you in your life, but a routine nonetheless. All right, let's take a little break for Transcend and then we'll get into some alcohol talk. When's the last time you switched your budget around? If you're spending cash on eating out and buying clothes, but you don't want to spend a bit on your health, what are you even doing? Every day from the moment you wake up until you go to bed, you have a series of choices that will make or break you. The things you eat, your physical activity or lack thereof, your sleep, it all adds up. Personally, I care about what I put in my body, and I found that it's hard to put a price on feeling like you're ready to take on the world every day. That's why I leverage the power of hormone optimization and fully customized peptide protocols from Transcend. If you're ready to take your health to the next level, head over to the link transcendcompany.com forward slash ESCO Elite and fill out an intake form today. All right. So on the last episode, we talked about how I wasn't even sure why some people smoke. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, why do they choose to smoke when there's so many negative attributes to smoking, right? Yeah. But then it made me really think about, like, but that's the same for alcohol. Why is is it just not as obvious when it's with alcohol? But there's so many negative things about alcohol. And, Lots. And, yeah, and there's been a time when... Even on here, I've thought to myself, you know, maybe we should like lay, lay off talking about it because, um, you know, it might annoy people. I know maybe I would have been annoyed when I was heavily into my drinking. Of course it does. But it triggers them. this is the hill I, I want to die on because I, I wish there were certain things that I thought about or heard or listened to before um, before I did, you know, I wish I would have learned a little earlier. Not to say to completely cut out drinking, because I think that the drinking that I did over the last year of my drinking days was fine. I don't really, my issue was when, um, when my mom died. That was a bad little episode. That was not a good episode of drinking, like the Saturday drink, getting drunk on a Saturday. Yeah. And then like the couple years before that, before you had your... Before you had your little, your mental breakdown, we were both kind of on a bad path. I was probably the worst path that I have ever been on. I was getting drunk every weekend and not just with um, alcohol. I would take a Xanax. That's bad. You know what I'm saying? 
So anyways, I wish I would have just been more informed on the damages because I'm so vain that I never really thought about the aging aspects. We just of, talked about that in my previous podcast. About really? Ophelia saying how she's so vain and she can't believe why she drinks because it, it destroys your vanity. It does the opposite. It ages you. You look terrible. It destroys. And it shows around the eyes. We're just talking about that. It does. It literally destroys your looks. Yeah. Your skin, you turn into like you leather do. skin. Shrivel it, up. It destroys, it destroys your looks. It really does. But first, before we get into that, I want to talk about why it makes you fat. Number one, it's high in empty calories, which we know this, right? We Very know it. High. We know it has calories. It's seven calorie per gram. Seven calories per gram. So it's a little yep. higher than like carbs, a little less than fats. But the problem is the why reason it makes you fat is because those are empty calories that for whatever reason we don't account for them. We think they're like free. And then when you drink alcohol, the body will immediately, the liver immediately metabolizes the alcohol for energy instead of fats or carbs because it's a toxin that wants it out of the body. So it metabolizes it for energy to get it out of the body and then it you know, doesn't, it's not working on the fats and the carbs. That's so true. But so, that's, there, there's also another thing why I, I believe why it makes you fat. And I'll be honest with you. When I used to drink, especially when it came to nightclubs at night, and this is even way before you came into my life. I'm talking about in my 20s when I was in San Francisco. We almost, I'm pretty sure 100% of the time we went to go eat after the club. Yeah, of course. Denny's. A taqueria or fast food, something. One of those three, that's all we had back then options. It was it, the Jack in the Box drive through Denny's, uh -huh. which was most of the time, or go get burritos in the mission. Yeah, you did that lowers, every time after the club. It lowers your inhibitions. Yes. And and then you, you'll you make poor food choices, of course. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so it affects your cortisol, right? So alcohol consumption increases cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone. So the body... The body stops burning fat, focuses on metabolizing the alcohol first, and it's going to increase your cortisol. What happens when your cortisol increases? You get hungry again. Your hungry. cravings. Yes. So that's the next day. So when you're drunk, you make poor food choices. The next day, your cortisol is still elevated. You're going to make more poor food choices. Yeah. And so it's just an, a, like a recipe for disaster. So the liver which plays a major role in fat metabolism, focuses on pr processing alcohol when you drink it. Excessive alcohol consumption over time can impair liver function, making it less efficient at, at, burning, at, at creating energy. It makes your liver less efficient, leading to an accumulation of belly fat. Right to the panza. So it literally, so it destroys the, so that's why people get fatty liver. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it destroys the liver's ability to metabolize fat, and then you end up with, yes. So that's what leads to fatty liver. Because I never understood mm -hmm. that process, like the medical process or the science behind it. Yeah. I never looked into that. Why does the liver get fat? I mean, and so what happens, and we're, we're actually also with hangovers, what happens with, not with hangovers, with like alcohol poisoning and alcohol toxicity where people like, get very sick or whatever. Yeah. It is because you've put in there's you've overloaded your liver with the toxin and it can't process it fast enough. And so it's like get it out. We can't do it. it over system overload. Eh, eh. Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous. Got you. Very dangerous. We don't think about that. We don't no. think about the we we discount the dangers of alcohol, which no. is sad. We really don't think about how dangerous it is. I know. And what one drink could do to somebody, you know, down the bad road. It just catch that first buzz and you keep going and then, man. It's crazy to me when you really read some of that. Yeah. So alcohol promotes belly fat, extra calories, you know, high cortisol levels, influences poor eating. Ages you. All bad. Right? Nothing good comes out of it. So that's Nothing. why you're getting fat. Now, why are you getting old, though? Why are you aging? This is where it <laughs> caught my attention. I was like, why in the hell would I drink when I'm trying to, I'm trying to look younger here? Yeah. So it's like you're countering it. Yes. Oh, my That's goodness. Funny. Um, well, 
It is because it's it dehydrates you. Yes. It Bad. literally sucks the life out of your skin, your kidneys, your liver. You get so dehydrated. It's kind of like the leather skin, kind of like think about people in dry, really, really dry climates. So a lot of times it's the dehydration that contributes to the hangover feeling too. I mean, that's a people usually think that's what it is. It's just dehydrant dehydration. That's actually not the only reason why you get you get hungover, but it it that's what really, really ages you. So people like in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Arizona, we see it. Remember, we're like people look like they have leather skin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They but heat the sun, and on top of that, drinking. So it also, obviously, we've talked about this, the whole puffy face thing. It causes inflammation in the body. So it triggers the release of cytokines, cytokines, which are inflammatory markers. Actually, the presence of a lot of cytokines is what is the like marker for a lot of disease. And that's why alcohol is connected to a lot, an increased risk of so much disease, because the more you drink, the more of those cytokines are released into your body, but they promote inflammation in your body, which that's what disease is. It's inflammation, right? Yeah. But that inflammation shows. It shows in your face. It yes, shows it in your eyes. Your eyes. Your hands and feet. Don't you wake up from a night of drinking like stiff? Stiff. Stiff. Hands are like tight. Tight. I always felt like that, like an old lady, like my joints are all hurting. That's from inflammation. It's from literally the release of those those cytokines. That's crazy. Nothing good comes out of no. it. Keep saying, and I it, know people don't want to hear that. They're tired of it. Like, listen, we're just the messengers. Don't shoot us. But even what I'm studying right now for my NASM cert for uh, nutrition is it says it has zero benefits and alcohol is a toxin. I mean, I'm just curious. Out of my own curiosity, I wanted to look more into it. Be- instead of just saying, oh, it's bad. Yeah. I wanted to just like, why? what, what yeah, does why? it do? And I want to know what are the things I'm I'm – what have I improved? Like, it makes me feel better about my choice. And so that's why, you know, I share it because it makes me feel better about my choice not to drink. And maybe somebody out there will just, they'll question it a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like they'll realize, you know, a drink or so, you get a headache, you get, you know, a little bit of headache or whatever. But if you are give, putting yourself into a full blown hangover, you have to understand what you've just done to your body. Kind of having you know, some realize what it's really doing to you. Also for the people that just drink every day. Every day. There's people that drink every day. Like mimosas every day. So your liver never has a chance to like not be dealing with toxins. No. What do you think that's going to do to your liver over time? I'm sorry, but that's shocking. It's going to kill you. I was never a daily drinker. So I I still can't understand that. I, I literally cannot understand that. At least you gave yourself a break in between like the weekdays that let your f- liver filter out compared to some people who drink every day. They crack a beer or two or their wine every day. You're right. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even drink every single weekend, but um, it also causes sodium retention and fluid retention. So many alcoholic beverages um, lead to water retention that causes fluid to accumulate in your tissues. So it's also a part of the dehydration. So the puffiness is due to the dehydration it causes your body to retain excess fluids because it's dehydrated so you're retaining water so it is one thing to get in front of a hangover is definitely uh boost up on the um electrolytes that part when you're drinking yes for sure slam some electrolytes but there's some other things i was kind of thinking like are these are is this bs or true have you ever heard that darker alcohol is like a worse hangover? Like dark liquors are worse? I have worse? heard of that, yes. So there's like Hennessy a, and all that and... Uh, it's true. All those other ones? It's true. So there's something... So it's called... And I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's called congeners. So congeners are byproducts of the fermentation process that give alcohol its flavor, color, and aroma. They include substances like acetone, methanol, and tannins. Darker liquors, such as whiskey, bourbon, red wine, and brandy, contain higher levels of conningers, which have been linked to severe hangovers. These chemicals are harder for the body to metabolize and contribute to hangover symptoms like headache, nausea, and fatigue. This explains also why I have a really hard time with uh, like red wine. 
my whole thing with whether people think we're bear or bad news, we're just informing. Like, I wish I would have known some of this stuff. I don't know if, I, I think that when we were, you know, in the height of drinking or whatever, it was either you were an alcoholic or you weren't. There yeah. wasn't like a lot of talk of what, what does it do? I didn't know. It's a legal substance. And I, so I did, I just didn't think it was a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we knew it was bad. We knew what it was going to do, but we did it anyways. It's funny. We know. We know back in those days when we're going to pool parties and cracking bottles of Vegas. We know what it was going to do. Well, no, no, no. I, no, I disagree. I knew it was going to make me feel bad, but I yeah. didn't know the destruction oh, yeah, on yeah. my body. No, no. I didn't that know part, that. Yeah. What you, it does? No. Yeah. Like, you know, people laugh it off if you're like drunk and, and vomiting. And like, if you're drunk and vomiting... That's you're, the toxins. <laughs> Your body's trying to expel it. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, you know, a laughing matter. It ain't fun. I don't know why people think that's fun. What's so fucking fun about throwing up? Hurting. That hurts. That burns. Coming out of your throat, your ugh, bile, everything. It's, it's disgusting. Awful. People laugh about it, make fun of people, take videos. Yeah. What? It made me want to think. So, you know, Michelle is 90 days, over 90 days, maybe like 95 days sober now. Her face has completely changed. She, she definitely, her liver was working overdrive on that binge drinking. Yeah. And she had the puff. She had the puffy face, even though she was losing weight. And she looks so much more slender in she the face youthful. now. She looks youthful. And so I looked up some other people. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. But um, some other people that once they stop drinking, like how different they look in the face. Whoa. That is crazy. Right? Because obviously yeah. poor sleep too. Yes. Poor you know, sleep. you just look better. You look younger. And then when you, when you quit alcohol and like go on a journey... And then yeah. you just look like a totally different person. You yes. know, you go on a, a, a healthy lifestyle journey and then just look at that reduce dude. He went years. from bad bod looking like a way older man to now young and fit. Look at that. Right? So it's just, I don't know. I think that, when, why do you see that a lot? You see a lot of people go on like a health journey and then they decide to quit during that like really steep health journey. And I think the reason for that is, when you go on a, a journey, a health journey, you really clean things up, you become so sensitive to the things that make you not feel 100%. Yeah. Because you, you create a new baseline for yourself. And you create a new discipline for yourself. Discipline yeah. going to the gym, eating better, and you don't want that in your life because that's going to hold you back. Yeah. Alcohol is going to hold you back. You, yeah. can't, you can slice it all your way you want. Oh, I only have one drink a day. Still holding you back. Still adds up to five to seven a, a week. Your liver's still working. Yeah, I remember when it was right when I had stopped drinking. I went out of town um, with Lisa, and I I didn't know for sure that I had stopped drinking yet. Like maybe I'm like maybe on this trip I might have a drink or two, but again I did that whole thing. Like, do I want to drink? Why? What's the reason? What's the benefit? You yeah. know. Now was that hard for you to do? No, at all. No, was it challenging? No, that's what I'm saying. Is I. Dis, I would make the choice, like, but why would I say yes? Extra calories, it might give me a headache. I might not get up to work out. Um, you know, one drink is not going to be enough to really give me a great buzz. So then I'd have to drink multiple, which would mean more, more calories, more headache. So I started to do that reasoning with me, and I've talked about that before. But also, when I got back from that trip, I thought to myself, even if I had done a little cock, one you know, small cocktail at every venue that we went to. That would have been fine, right? That's not excessive. That's no big deal. It's trying the mixology and the nice drinks, great. But that would have been like almost 2,000 calories when I added it up. I'm like, so basically, I saved myself 2,000 calories. I never had a headache. I woke up in the morning. I went to the gym. I felt great. You know what it is, though? Because I was this person. I feel like a lot of times people think they need the alcohol to be fun. It, yeah, me too. I'm mm -hmm. guilty. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize the damage it does to your wallet, how much you spend, how expensive oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Not just if you drink at home, but drinking outside, it adds yeah. up quick. That's a whole other, that's a whole other ball game. But, yeah. but I don't think that's the impact too. That's not what's driving people. What's no, driving not at all. people. They don't care. They'll, they'll spend their money on To it. drink is because they, it's like, remember the habit stacking? They attach alcohol with fun. Yes. And they don't know how to detach those two and still have fun. No. They don't think it's possible. They don't think they're capable. 
and they're afraid too. Who who are they hanging out with? What's their group look like? What is their group gonna think? People are so worried about like, oh, if mm-hmm. I stop drinking, my group of friends aren't gonna want to be friends with me or judge me. That but it's happens true, a lot. Though. But it they're does right. Happen. Aren't yeah. they right? Yeah, a lot of times the friends. This is the weird thing about alcohol is people are so concerned when you don't drink. Like they're so wanted to put like, what what do you care what I put in my body? Yeah. This is my body, mm-hmm. not yours. Why are you so concerned with what I put in my mm-hmm. body? But they want to make an argument. Oh, you're no fun. You know this. You put it in your body. Go ahead. Drink mm-hmm. up. Do you? Why are you worried about what I do? It's it's annoying. You know what I'm saying? No, I know. I'll tell you what's a little bit hard for me now is, you know, ignorance is bliss a little bit. So now I have a lot of this knowledge about alcohol and what it does, what it causes, what it looks like, you know, have a really clear picture. Yeah. And then I, I might have some conversations with people who I know are daily drinkers, casual daily drinkers, sometimes a little too much, a little hangover weekend, but but pretty frequently. And all the things that are going wrong in their life have something to do with that alcohol consumption, but they cannot reconcile that. And, I, and I'm not going to be the, the one to counsel them into that either. That's not my business. That's not my place. Yeah. I'm not the grim re- reaper of your party alcohol lifestyle. That's on you. Yes. But there are people that have a list of issues and ailments that they will do anything to get rid of except quit drinking because they refuse to believe they refuse to admit, they refuse to accept that that is the problem. That's the problem. And they use it as a crutch. Like, I need something to relax as well right. at night. This is my wind down. Yeah. So they associate the same thing. I know it's a different topic. I don't want to get off topic. It's like I did with weed. I excuse yeah. weed because, oh, I need it to help calm my temper down. Yeah. That was a big excuse. Uh-huh. Uh, calms my anxiety down. Mm-hmm. It's good for my mental health. False, false, and false. Mm-hmm. I was just telling myself that. I was excusing myself. So I guess alcoholics find, or people who drink. I yeah, not al- not just alcoholics. Yeah. Who drink to mm-hmm. excuse themselves. They find a reason. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be boring. Or I enjoy my cocktail. I'm I'm living. Got to live. We're only here not that long. No shit. Why do you have to live that way? Yeah. Well, I think that the, I, I mean, I was that person. For sure. Both of us were. But 100%. it was almost like alcohol was like an evil it was an evil liar. They call it spirits for a reason. It was evil because it made me believe that. It made me believe that I needed it in order to have relationships with people and socialize and have conversations and go out. I needed it to laugh and have fun. It, it I kid you not, made me believe that. And it wasn't true because I'm more... Um, you're present. Social. You're more present in the moment. You know what's going on around you. And I'm not, I don't have that anxiety that I feel like I need it. Like I just don't at all. Yeah. None. It, it was, it was the biggest lie that I, that I believed for a very, very, very long time. I mean, look how hard it was for you. When, I wouldn't say hard, but look, we went to Vegas and you were competing during that time and you're going, you know, we're going to the clubs and everything. You weren't even touching it. It wasn't hard for me though. Isn't that weird? It wasn't hard because I was so laser focused on what you I was set doing. Your mind to it, isn't it? But how did how did you do that? How did you uh, feel like you could do away with it? I felt I, I even for me it felt hard. Like fuck, how does she do it? I couldn't do it being Vegas and not drink because I had done it one time. It was hella hard. You know what? It's like I, I and, and it upsets it. me because I think back to that time, and I re- I was that time was like a high for me. I was so happy. Because I had never, I was so proud of what I had accomplished and what yeah. I had worked so hard for. Yeah, of course. That I didn't, I was fine. I didn't care. And I didn't care what people thought. People, and it's like people almost understood because they saw it was, I looked like a completely different person. Yeah, you did. And they just got it. And I didn't struggle with socializing. I had no issues. I went to Cabo. I went to Miami. I went to Vegas. I traveled that entire time. Didn't have a sip of alcohol, no recreational drugs nothing. I had my protein bars and water and, you know, and, uh, I'm just sad that I didn't, why did I stop? I was there. I had it. I had figured it out. Yeah. Why did I stop and start drinking again? I, that I don't know. I wish I knew. Cause you probably missed it to some degree. 
There's some part of you that it, somewhere deep inside your brain missed it, missed the fun, missed the catching a buzz, you know, Maybe, relaxation. I don't know. You're right. But I don't, it sucks because I was there, I had it. I was, I, I was on to something. It was, you know, it was a great time. Like I felt good. And, you know, now I feel, I'm glad because I got back to that. You know, I got back to that mindset. But it's so crazy because I, I let it, I let it go. And then, and then for the first and only time in my life, so it, all the other times in my life that I, I drank and did all that stuff was the social anxiety stuff, the party. I wanted to be fun. It was that stuff. And then there was only one time in my life that it got a little, you know, different. And that was when it wasn't even so much the death of my mom. It wasn't that. I actually turned to exercise and did a good thing there. It was actually after my mom died taking care of my dad. My dad drove me to drink, literally. He drove me to drink. Damn. And on the weekends, I wouldn't drink, obviously, during the week, but on the, the Saturday would come. And I would drink my f sadness and frustration and sorrows away. And I was a miserable mood all weekend long, just counting the hours until I had to go back there. Yeah, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. That's sad. And uh, were you ever, uh, uh, you ever drink at the house? Before me, my time. Never. Time. I've never, never drank had, at home. You never had house parties where you guys drank at home? Yeah, randomly we would have a house party and drink at home. But I yeah. was not a home drinker yeah. ever at all. No. I am a go out and have a good cocktail. I yeah. don't want to make a me too. at home cocktail. It don't taste the same. I'm the same way. You know, I, we did. Sometimes I would make like a punch if we had a party. We were a big kind of like party house, believe it or not. Like we threw a lot of parties. It feels weird because I don't know. It's I'm so different now. Yeah. We threw a lot of house parties and events and things at our house. And so we would drink then, but I never was someone that like would have a glass of wine with dinner or something. Never. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, I was never a house drinker either. Mm -mm. Drinking at the house, popping shots, none of that. You know, even when my the whole situation with my dad, I still it's not like I got wasted threw up. I haven't gotten done that in years, but it was the reason I was drinking changed. And so the mood that I was in to drink just pushed me deeper into that mood. I remember I would just come home and I'm not doing anything for the rest of the day. My productivity was crap. I remember that. And now you you actually work on Saturdays. You actually need that. That day to work on oh, yeah. the weekend. Oh, come Sometimes on. Sometimes even Sundays. Yeah. My business is in a totally different place. It my, is. My feelings about my relate, my ability to create and maintain relationships with my clients has changed. Well, we have to be sharper, both of us, you know? And I was telling my client that that he, uh, the reason that he's operating on a higher level, because now he's doing podcasts and now... He's working out. Now he's trying to better himself. And mm -hmm. then he has his new relationship. Then you have other business relationships. Yeah, you have to be sharp. Doors, you have, you have to be present. You mm -hmm. have to be there. Mm -hmm. How are you going to be there if you're hungover? Mm -hmm. You're not all there. You're forgetting things. You're mm -hmm. missing You're missing appointments. You're you're fouling up. People are going to see that. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in business with this guy. He's, a, he's not sharp. No, I know. You got to be sharp. I know. So I guess, you know, maybe, maybe there's one person that's going to listen to this episode that it's going to make them have that same question in their head when the waitress says can i get you a drink and you're going to stop and you're going to think you're going to think do i want a drink why do i want the drink what are the benefits maybe you're going to have that moment and it's yeah. going to you know i don't know just make you think twice that's true all right you guys thank you so much we will see you on the next one see you.